How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to another Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video we're going to be going over the Game Week 22 preview. After a hectic festive period we're finally going back to normality with a nice 9 day break between Game Weeks. But Game Week 22 we're going to have some nice preparation as I said quite a nice break before it so went over on Twitter asked for your guys questions. We've got a couple of questions most of them leading up to the double Game Week. But we'll talk about that all later on. Let's get into the preview. Thank you to One Football for sponsoring this video. Link down below if you do want to use my download link to download this wonderful app. Thanks again for sponsoring the video. If you don't know, One Football is the everything football related app. It's free to download on iOS or Android, and you can see there on the table. I'm following the Premier League right now. Gives me all the goals, assists, and whatever I need to know, as well as following my favorite team if I do want to follow a team, which is, for me, Liverpool, but for you, it could be anyone else. Also, if you want to track more leagues than just the Premier League, go and check out this app. As I said, link down below. So a reminder about the League Cup fixtures. Obviously, there has been FA Cup, but this is being recorded after those FA Cup fixtures fixtures the league cup the reason being it's quite a big thing is that leicester man united and manchester city are all playing their semi-finals this midweek and we do own a lot of their players so please keep an eye on that i think the main talking point of these games is going to be of the fact that jamie vardy starts in this one it's going to be the opposite of how we usually treat these midweek fixtures i think if jamie vardy starts midweek he 100% will start on the weekend as well. So at least we can kind of get a nice guarantee before that game week deadline. So at least we can get a nice little closure before that game week 22 deadline, whether we captain Jamie Vardy and whether we even keep him. So that's the nice thing about the League Cup. The other thing is it is a Friday night deadline. Uh, for me, it's going to be around 9 o'clock at night. So for you, it'll probably be about 7. I know we've gotten quite good with these deadlines because of how quickly they've come. So I'm pretty sure most of you guys will be keen and ready to go there were a lot of questions about the double game week 24 if you don't know i recorded an ultimate guide to the double so if you want to go check out all those questions a lot of them relate to game week 24 and that video that i did create so link down in the description if you want to go check it out we will be covering one talking point that i didn't exactly cover in that video later on in this preview though so stay tuned for that one so the watch list has not changed since last game week reason being i'm not really looking to transfer any of these players in Mohamed Salah could be a transfer in, but I'm kind of leaning towards Mane right now. So I think Mane will see himself into our squads come that Game Week 22 deadline. But I am looking at that Liverpool triple up. If you watch the Game Week 24 Ultimate Guide, I'm looking at tripling up on Trent Alexander Arnold, Mohamed Salah, and Sadio Mane. So I'm monitoring Mohamed Salah's situation right now. I think it's nice that I can prolong this Liverpool transfer as long as possible as it allows me to get the most insight into that squad. And I can even maybe switch around to that Liverpool defence if so be it. So Mohamed Salah firmly on my radar and my watch list for these next couple game weeks. We have Sidibe from Everton who once again started out of position which is making him quite intriguing. The nice thing is as well as on the weekend uh, when there was a substitution Sidibe just slotted back into that fullback position uh, and the Everton fullback was substituted. So that shows me that Sidibe is reliable defensively and attackingly and he should be getting 90 minutes most game weeks but he remains firmly on the radar i don't think right now looks like a transfer in as i'm kind of focusing on those liverpool players but if you want a transfer in for maybe a defender a little bit cheaper than others 5.4 million uh, has gone up in price since the last preview so he's got four assists though so he sometimes offers that attacking threat but it's just those everton fixtures that we will cover on later on then fabianski we all know him he got his clean sheet and he's eight points after coming back from injury. He looks quite good, does have that double, but it's a little bit of an iffy double for them with Leicester and Liverpool, which is probably some of the worst fixtures that you can have. But Fabianski still remains on the radar after most goalkeepers aren't performing that well, and Fabianski looks like an easy switch at that 4.9 million mark. The first question, and the one that I didn't cover in the ultimate guide to Game Week 24, is how to get the funds for your Liverpool attackers. So Sadio Mane, Mohamed Salah, both currently priced at that 12.3 million mark. Massively expensive. It's going to take up a lot of your budget. So you're going to have to look at replacing players. So I've got four examples here. This can relate to any player though, and we'll cover that now. So Delhi Ali represents your Spurs options. So right now, Spurs are looking like a sell. They play Liverpool 
cool next up. So maybe if you have a lot of patience, you can look at that. But for me, it's a transfer out, and I'll be probably transferring out two of my Spurs options, which is quite a lot. So they provide enough budget for me to bring in the likes of Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane comfortably, and that's why it's quite nice owning them as they're easily downgradable. The obvious one for Spurs to transfer out is Harry Kane after picking up that hamstring injury. Rumor about six weeks out, so that's enough game weeks to kind of replace him with a better option, especially when Liverpool have that double. So I would transfer my Spurs options out. I think with the United options as well, uh, I don't think that they're the most terrible options in the world, but I do think that they're worth downgrading if you need to find fun. So Marcus Rashford, Anthony Martial. Rashford probably provides an easier way to downgrade as he is about that 9 million mark. So if you're looking at maybe Firmino, you can easily upgrade Rashford to Firmino or you can just downgrade him to someone like Greenwood if you really need those funds for your midfield. The options that I wouldn't look at downgrading is the likes of Kevin De Bruyne and Jamie Vardy, especially if you've owned these players for a long time. Reason being, they store a lot of value. So I think currently De Bruyne is an excess of 0.5 million that I won't get on him if I do sell. And with Jamie Vardy, it's a similar story. So with these two still have good fixtures. They're some of the best informed players in the Premier League. So I do think over the upcoming fixtures, they can still do well. And that's why I wouldn't look at transferring these players out. You still want to get that budget for later on in the season when we use things like our bench boosts and our second wild cards so that we can maximize our points for those double and blank game weeks. So these two, I probably wouldn't look at transferring out. Obviously, every team is different. And if you really need the funds and you really want a Liverpool player and you want to take that risk, I think you can transfer these guys out. But I think that I would kind of sway you away from that decision and I would keep these two. The question of what to do with Kane, we've covered earlier how he pulled his hamstring or had a tear in his hamstring, which is quite uh, annoying for him and his owners, um, but probably more for him as he is the injured player. But these two provide great budget options. We spoke about how to get funds into your squads and these two players provide that exact route and they're still performing very well. So the first one you don't need an introduction is Danny Ings. Probably one of the most informed players in the Premier League currently gets that one goal and three bonus points basically every game week for about six game weeks now. So looks a great shot. So Leicester away, a tougher fixture. So with me, I'm probably going to be holding off for that Leicester away fixture and then bringing him in for that nice run afterwards. The Liverpool away fixture is a little bit annoying, but I will give him that considering that sea of green afterwards. But with Danny Ings, I think if you have the budget for him, he's the number one striker that you should be looking at bringing in. Reason being, great form, great fixtures, and Southampton have shown a little bit of resurgence recently, and they are looking like a better side. With Calvert Lewin, if you can't afford Danny Ings, you can always look at Calvert Lewin. We'll be covering him now afterwards. Uh, we're going through a nice in depth analysis of him, but Calvert Lewin has those really nice fixtures, and you can always look at him. But I think my preference is on Danny Ings if you need a replacement for Kane. So Calvert Lewin has really nice fixtures over the next couple, about five fixtures. Then runs into a little bit of an annoyance, but I think that Arsenal away fixture, I know recently they've been better defensively, but I think they can always show some creaks and cracks, and I think Calvin Lewin can expose them. But with these next five, they provide a nice little bit of a differential, and especially, as I said, if you need funds for your Liverpool attackers, you can always bring in Calvin Lewin. My preference is Danny Ings, but if you can't afford Danny Ings, I think Calvin Lewin provides the perfect replacement for him. Has eight goals over 1,217 minutes, and with Ancelotti coming in, he does look like the favored forward. So I think that he provides a good option and a little bit of a nice differential punt. I would bring him in this game week though, if you're gonna be looking at him, as he has Brighton at home, which I think is a nice fixture to do. Uh, you can always postpone that, but then you're kind of nullifying his effect as you kind of wanna own him over these next five, and then you can always look at transferring him out. Another question people were asking is this whole Martial versus Madison debate. So right off the bat, Martial is currently ill. So just make sure that you do have analysis of that press conference before you make your transfer decision. If Martial's out, then obviously Madison comes in as the favored option. But out of these two, for me, it comes down to high ceiling versus safety. So the safety option is gonna be Madison for me, is playing in the better side, is in better form, and provides more consistent points. So I know that he doesn't provide that massive ceiling of about two goals a game, but I think with Madison, he's gonna provide a consistent returns from now to the end of the season. As I said, playing in a really good side of Leicester who are gonna be competing for that top four, but with Martial, it's that highest ceiling. He's playing out of position as that center forward for Manchester United. And with their fixtures coming up, Norwich at home is a nice fixture, but then it's Liverpool away. Burnley is always a hit or miss. And then Wolves, as we've seen, 
can be a little bit hit or miss as well. But I think with Martial, you can bring him in. I think if you have him, I wouldn't transfer him out for Madison. But if you own either of these players, I think it's just a stick. But if I was to transfer in one for this game week, it would definitely be Madison, just because of his more consistent returns. And I think he complements that Vardy double up really nicely. With Manchester United over the season, they've shown that they can go off form, on form really quickly. So it's quite annoying owning their players. So that's why I'm simply going for safety on this one and going for Madison. With the last talking point, we'll be talking about captaincy. And this game week, it really is a tough one. It also comes down to kind of the Martial versus Madison debate with the safe option versus the high ceiling. So I'm going to start off with kind of the out there pick of Sadio Mane against Tottenham Hotspur. So Spurs recently have been really poor and I do think Liverpool will beat them. So you've got to be backing Sadio Mane to score on that one. But I do think he's kind of the more out there pick when you have Kevin De Bruyne and Jamie Vardy in your squad. So Jamie Vardy, the safety pick. Southampton, I know they played better against Spurs, but I think Leicester are a better side than Spurs this season. And with Jamie Vardy coming back from injury, should be kind of wanting to add to his goal tally for that golden boot. And I think that he does provide a really nice option, but he's kind of the safety option to go for. I think he's going to be the most captained option this week. And hopefully this week he does play and we're not relying on our vice captains. With Kevin De Bruyne, I think that he's that out there pick that's going to provide really well. So if you want to take the risk, I do think it's worth it. Reason being Aston Villa, very poor recently. I know they got their win last game week, but I do think with Man City, they're looking a lot better. It is an away fixture, which is quite annoying. I think if it was a home fixture, then Kevin De Bruyne would be a lot of a better shot. But with the form he's in, I think he can definitely do something in this one. Was rested for that FA Cup fixture. It's going to be interesting to see if he starts midweek against Manchester United in that League Cup. But I don't think uh, that's going to be too much of a hamper on him. And I think barring injury, he'll definitely play on the weekend. So Kevin De Bruyne, as I said, great form and probably the high ceiling. So you've got to kind of take a debate on this if you want to go for a risky option that probably will return better or go for a safe option with Jamie Vardy. So that's going to wrap up the video guys. Hopefully you did enjoy. Please like it if you did and subscribe if you are new or have not subscribed yet. I'm going to be signing off. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.